guys, so a while back I did a haul video where I went to the Asian supermarket, I might have taken you guys, and um, I brought back a ton of goodies and I kind of explained what each of the ingredients were for and people in general seemed to enjoy that. So I'm going to do a uh, second take on that and um, so nice red bag indicative that it is an Asian grocery store. So um, I recently went uh, grocery shopping for, you know, stuff that I would need. Um, I actually took a camera with me, but it was my phone camera and the audio wasn't so good. So uh, we'll see what happens in the auditing process. Maybe I can actually uh, bring you guys there. So I took a bunch of my favorites that I thought that maybe you guys would not necessarily know about and um, kind of wanted to share it with you. So not all of it may be relevant. You guys can choose to use it or not, but at least you know what it is, okay? So first thing first, so these, these dried bean curd sticks, I recently used them in my Buddha's Delight special. I think I explained that a little bit, um, but I got more of these because you can't really find them anywhere other than for the Asian grocery store. And um, I'm not sure, there's a lot of reflection, but I'm not sure if you can see, but basically they are like layers of dried soybean material. So basically like if you had really thin pieces of tofu um, and then you kind of dry them, they end up like this. And when you eat it, it's kind of, it's thinner and it's a whole completely different texture. So, you know, for people who are a little bit sick of eating tofu and kind of want, you know, a different texture, this might be your go-to. So let's see. So next I went to the noodles section and I usually get a lot of noodles from um, Asian grocery stores. So I have two for you guys today. This is just um, typical kind of wheat noodles that I use for a majority of things. I, I think I use this in the spicy uh, ragu special. I use it in the, um, the jajangmyeon, the Korean noodles recipe. Yeah, and I like kind of the difference in texture that it gives. It's kind of like different types of pasta. So when you go to the Asian grocery store, there are so many types. Like um, sometimes they have eggs in them, sort of like egg noodles. Sometimes they put shrimp or scallop paste in them as well. So you get like little bits and pieces of flavors throughout. And you have uh, noodles of different texture, noodles of different sides, like different widths. So really anything that you're looking for in terms of like flavor, texture, uh, there's a ton at the grocery store. So. Uh, this is one I already opened one because I was eating it, but I just wanted to show that to you. So bright, the light. So this is taro ramen, and it looks like this is actually a little uh, tinge of purple, and I think it's more like health foodie. But uh, long story short is um, if you guys enjoy the noodles that you get in the ramen packets, but like let's say that you just like the noodles and you want to make the soup or you make the you want to make the toppings yourself, this is kind of your answer. There's no flavor at all, so it's plain. So it's just for those people who enjoy kind of the texture of of ramen, which I do. Next, so this is good. So in Asian grocery stores, there's obviously a lot of people with different religions, different kind of eating preferences, and obviously there's a lot of Buddhists as well. So growing up, I had a lot of these wheat gluten substitutes because um, my mom would sometimes have like vegetarian days. I hadn't tried these yet, but I showed you, you know, a couple cans of these, like they remind me of the wheat gluten, which was um, very spongy. I expect this one to be a lot firmer. So what's cool about Asian grocery stores is like long before I think like being vegan or like vegetarian was a thing, you know, fake meats and whatnot. Asian grocery stores already had this to kind of cater to, you know, the Buddhist customers and people who didn't eat meat. So they've had a lot more time to play around with texture. So I think that this one will be a lot firmer. I don't know, maybe I'll do a taste test on like vegan can in a duck. Like that's vegan duck in a can, jeez. Oh, these, these are kind of other side stuff that I got. So I always, load up on like rice flour, potato starch, wheat starch. Reasoning is because like if you're into making dumplings, if you're into making baos, a lot of these ingredients can be really expensive if you choose to get it on Amazon. Um, each of these bags of rice flour was about a dollar, a dollar ten. And if you go and get like things like potato starch, sweet potato starch, um, sometimes they put wheat starch in baos to kind of um, give them a little bit more texture. Uh, 
those are all pretty cheap at the Asian grocery store. So, you know, sometimes when you're watching um, kind of like a clip of like a YouTube cooking show and it happens to be ethnic food, you end up spending a ton of money on like spices and, and ingredients. But if you actually go to the grocery store, like the Asian grocery store or the Indian grocery store, you'll, you'll actually be really surprised to see that um, most of these ingredients, because they're more readily used, uh, is actually much cheaper. Well, let's talk about gypsum powder for a sec. So, I believe gypsum is a rock or a mineral of sorts, so it's kind of very funky to be putting into foods. Um, I want to be making a tofu pudding recipe coming up, and I think a lot of um, Chinese people or Asian people have had it, you know, either at dim sum or you know while they were traveling before. But it's essentially like super silky tofu. And then um, we usually put um, a little bit of um, sweet syrup on top of it and that's dessert. But what you essentially do is you take soy milk and then you add this gypsum powder to it and it kind of functions very much like like gelatin it kind of like hardens it up a little bit it's strange but if you go and look at most um, tofu kind of packages usually there'll be something like magnesium chloride in it and i think um, that is kind of what helps to gelatinize it and kind of like firm it up otherwise it'll just be like beans and water next oh okay so these are pretty cool these are um, dried monk fruit. They look like little kiwi balls. I think most of you guys have heard of monk fruit before if you're into finding sugar alternatives. Um, like stevia and monk fruit, I think are the two uh, big ones right now that seem to be like all natural and good for you as opposed to being made from chemicals and whatnot. This monk fruit has actually been used for a really long time in Asia to, you know, treat different symptoms. In terms of how it's used in the culinary sense is um, Asian people make a lot of like herbal soups. It's kind of like a good way of um, keeping your health up. We usually have it after dinner. But this monk fruit is basically how they sweeten up their soup. And instead of having it be in like a weird powder form, like, I don't want it. you guys have seen me use this before. This is um, rock candy, but it's not I'm trying to see if it's like super bright if I put it here. Yeah. So this is rock candy and it's not it's not candy, it's not candy necessarily for eating, although I guess you can. But um, in a lot of our soups and a lot of our dessert soups, Chinese people don't necessarily use sugar. Um, they usually use something like this, like a rock candy or like there are slabs of like brown sugar slabs and they'll use those. And I find that there is a slight flavor difference because with the rock candy, I believe you make this with sugar and water. So the thing is it doesn't, um, when you use this, the, the sugar flavor is not so sugary that it like hits you. That it's like, whoa, that's super, super sweet. It's kind of like a gentle or sweet, but it, it's like candy. It's like rock candy that you would see uh, for kids. Last two. So I um, already started using this, this um, soy sauce. So I got a uh, light soy sauce this time. I think maybe I've explained this or maybe I haven't, but the difference is between light soy sauce and dark soy sauce. Uh, some soy sauces are kind of like a general blend for the uh, people that just want soy sauce, but when you're talking about light soy sauce. So light soy sauce to me, um, the flavor is a lot more fresh tasting. I almost wanna say it's a little bit more sour. Whereas the dark soy sauce is, it's more mature, it's more developed, it's more like a little bit like a red wine uh, type of flavor. So depending on what you want, like for something like fish, um, you might probably use the light soy sauce for because it's a little bit more acidic and kind of fresh tasting and it would taste better in fish. And then sometimes like with stews or whatnot, you might wanna choose to use a darker soy sauce. Or like sometimes you might just wanna mix both and and just not have to deal with any of that. So I always like the, the Asian soy sauces because I think it must be the way that they ferment it, but I, I feel like the flavor is a little bit more well-developed. There's like something else there as opposed to like just salt. Last thing, um, I was out of a jar of mirin. Mirin, if you guys don't know, I love using it um, in Japanese foods. Uh, mirin is basically sweetened rice wine. It's like rice wine with um, sugar in it. So if you're ever uh, in a pinch and you don't have um, mirin, you can just use rice wine, which is a lot cheaper, and um, put in some sugar in it, and you should be you should be okay. Anyways, guys, I think that that is uh, it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this and that um, you know thumbs up if you uh, enjoyed watching this. And I hope you guys learned something from it. I think that that's you know essentially 
why I do these videos. Um, yeah, so I will see you guys again uh, later, soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>